Switzerland, which is the world's largest offshore wealth center, worth an estimated 2.2 trillion in assets, has agreed to share financial information with almost 60 other countries. Now, I have Nicholas Perdue from Antheus Consulting in the studio. Welcome today. Hello. So, Nicholas, tell us about this changing landscape. This pressure has come from US and Europe. Now, do you think we will see continued pressure from other countries, particularly maybe Germany, for example? As you said, indeed, um, pressure is uh, increasing a lot uh, on Switzerland. Um, tax compliance is now key in this new financial landscape. And Switzerland had to sign um, a list of agreements with other countries, uh, European countries or the US. Um, it was basically a way for the country, maybe the only way uh, possible to keep on accessing foreign markets, for instance, for uh, trading or marketing purposes. So they didn't really have the choice. Um, this being said, um, if you look at the performance of the Swiss uh, financial sector, currently it's still fairly good. So it tends to, to prove already that Switzerland has more to sell than only the, the banking secrecy. Um, if you look into details of those agreements, you, you, you can see that Switzerland is always trying to go for um, on-demand tax assistance agreements rather than for um, automated uh, transfer of, uh, of information. Uh, so basically, they are the country is always trying to find the best approach to, on one side, respect the international pressure you mentioned, but on the other side, um, to harm, to impact the business uh, the least. Um, obviously, this is not always that easy. Uh, if, we, if we talk about uh, the, the US agreements, um, where the pressure is very high, you see that there are some automated transfers of, of information um, to the US. Um, but what Switzerland is trying to avoid on top of respecting the, 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 the new policies is to uh, avoid uncertainty, basically. So even if it's painful, um, they, they just want to avoid um, uncertainty in the, in the coming years, especially with the US. Uh, as I said, it can be very painful uh, if you look at the latest uh, uh, US program. Um, um, basically, it's, it's looking in the past, so in past client situation. It has a very tight deadline uh, and it is coming with um, quite large fines if the requirements are not met. So landscape is changing, uh, new challenges ahead, obviously, but Switzerland is always trying to find the proper balance between respecting uh, this new environment and still um, target growth and, um, uh, and sustainability of the financial sector. And can you tell me about FINMA's recent report on circular operational risks at banks? Yeah, in, in this context, indeed, it's very interesting to see that um, operational risk um, standards are complied with also um, basically, FINMA has been translating uh, the Basel Committee principles around um, um, operational risk uh, into the, the revision of this, of this uh, circular here in Switzerland. Um, basically, the goal is twofold, is on one side to protect the bank, uh, obviously, but also to protect the client. Um, there is a strong focus on this bank-client uh, confidentiality uh, here in Switzerland. So, Again, it's linked to what we said uh, before around uh, legislation and regulation. Uh, you need to comply with regulation, but at the same time, you need to, to make sure that the privacy of clients, of persons, which is key here uh, in Switzerland, is still, uh, is still re respected. Um, if you look into details of this circular, um, no big surprises, I would say. Uh, what is important is um, controls, systems, and reports of operational risk. Um, what is important as well is to uh, accompany these um, uh, systems and reports with a strong uh, IT infrastructure. It's now becoming um, more and more key here, uh, an IT infrastructure which will um, um, ensure um, integrity, um, security and availability of, of data. Um, and, and talking about data and about cloud data, it's true that uh, this circular is um, emphasizing um, the cloud data protection. Um, basically, at the same time, it means that banks, they need to have an exhaustive knowledge of their clients because they need to respect uh, tax assistance or, or exchange of information agreements with other countries. But doing that 
they still need to make sure that this enriched uh, base uh, of, of uh, client's data is sufficiently protected. So here again, the circular is setting some principles to make sure that the banks are, are, are keep on protecting the, the confidentiality. Um, we can maybe mention some of them, for example. Um, the first one maybe is that uh, there is a, a data ownership principle. So within banks, you, have, you need to have employees who are uh, owning the data, so they're responsible for the entire life cycle of the data within the bank. There is also this uh, need to know principle. Uh, basically, you are supposed to grant access rights to data only based on um, the actual need of the employee to consult uh, some, uh, some client data. You are also supposed to uh, share responsibility of protecting the data within your bank. So it's not only with control or with IT, it can be with front office as well. Um, on top of that, there are, there are higher requirements about uh, employees uh, and their profiles that are supposed to work um, within banks and within departments um, that have access to, to client data. Um, also, um, there's no prevention of usage of outsourcing. Uh, you still can uh, use providers, which, by the way, is economically key here uh, in the area. But you are supposed to have a very strong due diligence and testing um, processes around this outsourcing. And you are keeping the responsibility for, for the data. Uh, and the provider is not responsible for the, for the bank's um, data, obviously. So again, a lot of challenges ahead, because this will mean some mm -hmm. uh, Maybe not some major changes, but some adaptation of um, governance, of culture, of systems. Um, but again, as for um, um, the, the new uh, regulation for other countries, this is uh, key for growth, but uh, also for survival, I would say. Uh, Switzerland has to do it and has to go through those steps with, again, finding the proper balance between keeping the sector as it is today with the expected growth and answering to um, foreign regulations. Is there anything else you'd like to mention before I let you go? Well, I guess we'll need to, in the coming months, uh, look for uh, implementation of this US program here. It will be, it will be key and will, it will have some impact. And for, the, for next year, I guess, uh, we need to, to look at what uh, Germany uh, will be asking to Switzerland, what France will be asking mm -hmm. to Switzerland in terms of uh, uh, information. Um, we might go for some rubric-like um, agreements which would be good for Switzerland or for more FATCA-like agreements, uh, which is a bit more painful for, for the sector. Nicholas, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, that is it for right now. But if you like this interview, then do stay tuned to Dukoscopy TV as we have much more coming up. Thank you very much. Goodbye for now.